welcome you to the Singles County Planning Commission virtual public hearing. This meeting is for the purpose of hearing presentations on petitions for rezoning or requests for special procedure permits. I am Wayne Hilsinger, Chairman of the Commission. In addition to the other members of the Planning Commission, I would like to introduce Jacob Trimble, Acting Director of Planning and the planners assigned to tonight's petitions. The commission will not make a decision on petitions heard this evening. Normally, the commission will receive staff reports and make a decision on tonight's petition at an executive meeting in May. Additional comments, letters, and petitions submitted to the Department of Planning within two weeks of this meeting will be distributed to the planning commissioners in their executive meeting agenda packet. If additional information is required, the decision may be delayed. The planning commission's recommendations will then be moved forward to the county council who has the responsibility for the final decision. The meeting will observe the following guidelines. Planning department staff will show photos of the petition site, then the petitioner will present the request. They will be allotted 15 minutes, then persons in favor, in opposition, or with concern will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Please note you may only speak one time. To indicate you wish to speak, click the raise hand icon to the right of your name on the participant list. Please keep your remarks brief and avoid repetitive or seconding presentation. After all opposition speakers have spoken, only the petitioner will be allowed a five minute rebuttal to answer questions and points raised by other speakers. The commission may ask questions of any speaker. After the meeting concludes, a poll will appear allowing you to indicate whether you are in favor, opposition, or with concern. This is not a vote and is not binding on the commission or the county council. The purpose is to make the crowd count part of the record for each petition. And with that, we'll hear tonight's first petition, which is PC 14-22 Quaw Paw Whispering Pines, LLC. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Before you is PC 1422 uh, Quapaw Whispering Pines LLC, which is a request for an amended C8 for a 0 0.59 acre tract of land uh, located on the north side of Olive Boulevard, approximately 200 feet west of Whispering Pines Drive. As you can see from the uh, county context map, this parcel is located in, in mid county and the Parcel is outlined in red on the aerial. Um, it's, it's sort of in one of the middle parcels as part of this larger retail development. And you can see in the land use map uh, some of the, the surrounding context um, to the south um, across Olive Boulevard and also uh, to the east. Um, on the north side of Olive is the municipal limits for the city of Creve Core. Um, and then uh, to the west of the subject site is largely office um, and, and retail, and then there is multifamily residences um, to the northeast. And you can see from this area, it's, it's a little bit of a closer view. You can see the, the specific parcel within this larger retail development um, that is this, the subject of tonight's petition. Okay, is that it? Uh, I was going to show you some some photos. Sorry. Uh, so this view is looking northeast um, from Olive Boulevard. Uh, you can see the public hearing sign, and then this view would just be turning around, looking southwest across Olive Boulevard. Um, that's a a large uh, sort of retail commercial center anchored by a Schnucks grocery store. And then this view would be looking west. You can see the existing signs on site. And then this view would be looking west along Olive Boulevard. And then this, this is looking northwest um, along 
Graham. Uh, that's the, the youth bridge site adjoining uh, the subject site. And then this view would be looking north into the site. You can see the existing um, development, the uh, sort of middle building, um, sort of the empty retail space where next to Michael's flooring is the, the petition site. And this view would be looking southeast uh, towards the Walgreens. Uh, and then this view is northeast. Um, and actually, Ms. Buck, it's, it's this entire building is part of the petition site. Um, there's only one tenant space available, though. And this view would be looking north. This is at the rear of the site. And then this view is looking northeast. And then turn around and looking south at the the back of the um, existing structure. And then this view would be looking southeast across Whispering Pines Drive. Uh, and then this view is looking south towards Olive Boulevard. Um, on the south side, you can see it in the distance is the BJC West County Hospital. Uh, and the petitioner has a presentation at this time. All right, thanks, Paul. Petitioner? So, Rusty, I'm making you the presenter. So you'll have to click share down by your mute button and then click PowerPoint. Okay, am I sharing my screen or am I sharing your your screen? You'd be sharing your screen. Do you have the PowerPoint open? I do. Yeah, so click share and then you would, yeah, it's coming up now. And then just take it full screen. We can see it. I'm, uh... Familiar with this one. <clears throat> Apologize. Can you help me how I bring this up now? Uh, we can see the presentation. You just need to start it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So can you see the screen? This yeah, is, this is big enough. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, honorable planning, planning commission members, as well as planning staff and uh, those that are watching. And my name is Rusty Saunders. I'm a landscape architect, land planner at Loomis Associates at uh, 750 Spirit 40 Park Drive out in Chesterfield. And I am here today uh, representing uh, Kwa Pao Whispering Pines LLC, uh, the owner of this property. Also on the call is Mr. Rod Jones, uh, who's the owner of the property, and uh, Ms. Tricia Ray, who is uh, operations manager for uh, Quadrant Properties and is the manager of this facility. Uh, as we stated earlier, Kwa Pao Whispering Pines is uh, requesting uh, a change of zoning from C8 to C8 amended uh, in order to uh, uh, lease this space to for a medical clinic. Um, and uh, the photos that were shown earlier uh, represent the site well. The um, uh, and on this exhibit, we're basically just showing the old final development plan from 1996, and you can see in red the actual. Uh, Track that we're talking about, which is considered to be parcel three on this development plan. And uh, again, uh, in, fo in <clears throat> aerial photo, the brown roof is the building, the parking lot, both front and rear are part of this lot. Um, currently, this uh, Subject property is um, was utilized by two tenants. Uh, the building's about 7,500 square feet. Uh, half of it is in this Michael's flooring. The other half was in a mattress store that uh, has uh, been vacant from the sites for about 18 months now. And Walgreens is immediately to the right. 
the uh, restaurant uh, is immediately to the left, and you're looking north in this photo. Um, in um, the uh, proposed tenant for this facility is a company called Paragon Healthcare, and uh, they've engaged an architect to uh, work out the tenant space within this space. Uh, there are no changes to the actual physical building uh, being proposed with the exception of an entry door that's going to change uh, there uh, and uh, signage uh, on the monument sign that you saw in the previous photograph would be updated as well as uh, there'll be a uh, proposed monument or a proposed building sign on the south face of this building. Those are the only changes that would occur with this new tenant. Uh, parking, uh, we have plenty of parking. Uh, we would, uh, if uh, if this was to be, uh, and if this is to be approved for Paragon Health Care, uh, we would have uh, an excess of 11 spaces uh, under your current uh, parking codes. And uh, there's parking in the rear as well as this parking in the front, as well as a shared parking agreement and shared access agreement with these, all these uh, uh, facilities that are present on the site. Um, that's the extent of our presentation. Uh, the rezoning is necessary uh, because of the use, which is a medical clinic. Uh, no further uh, site changes are contemplated uh, with this rezoning. And uh, we're here for answering any questions that may, uh, that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any questions? No, I don't have any. Uh, <clears throat> just go ahead. Wait, this is Bill. What are the typical hours for this um, clinic? Sir, I'm not familiar with what, what those might be, but they would typically be business hours uh, that they would be operating. Uh, I don't know how, uh, no different than a retail operation. As far as hours, we can find it. Thank you. Can you hear me? This is Trisha. Yes, go ahead. Um, the, the possible tenant has told us the hours would be eight to five, Monday through Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. Is this a walk in type uh, clinic? Walk off the street, or you have to have appointments? Appointments would be made by the clients. And exactly what kind of medical office is this? I saw something about infusion, but I wasn't. Yes, this, this uh, particular tenant uh, has infusion clinics. Uh, they have multiple sites throughout Texas and Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, basically, they provide uh, infusions for uh, people that have some have different uh, medical conditions, uh, such as cancer treatments or treatments for hemophilia and other uh, sorts of uh, uh, medical needs that they might they might have. But they're um, they're very modern appearing, uh, well done tenant finishes, and uh, there would be appointments made for these uses. What kind of accommodations do you have for HADMAT? Excuse me, I, I can't, I couldn't hear you. Uh, these folks have been uh, in this business for, for quite a while. Uh, they will have to abide by any of the uh, regulations related to hazmat materials. As far as handling them, disposing them, that sort of thing. Okay, anyone else have any questions? Being no one, uh, let's see if anyone, if we have any comments from any uh, attendees. Mel, you wanna take it from here? Sure, so if you would like to ask a question or, question or make a comment uh, regarding this petition, please click the raise hand button next to your name on the attendee list. It might also be in the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx application. But at this time, I don't see anyone. Okay. Um, 
then we do not need rebuttal on this. So, uh, commissioners, you got any other questions? Seeing none, this will conclude this uh, this hearing, and we'll go on to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. And the next item is 15-22, John D. Johnson, a request for amended C-8. Good evening. PC-15-22, John D. Johnson, is a request for an amended C-8 for a 0.92 acre tract of land on the west side of Lime Ferry Road, approximately 415 feet north of South Crest Way. As you can see on the county context map, this site is in South County, and there you can see it outlined in red on the aerial. On the land use map, you can see that most of Lime Ferry Road surrounding the subject site is developed with um, retail commercial development, including um, a fencing company and a plant nursery that surround the site. Um, on either side of Lime Ferry Road, off the frontage, are residential development, um, primarily in the R3 residence district. And additionally, south of the site down Lime Ferry Road is um, a, one of the sites for St. Louis Community College. On this aerial, you can see some of the surrounding commercial and residential development. This is looking west into the site. Lime Ferry is at my back um, where you can see the public hearing sign. Looking north up Lime Ferry. Looking east directly across Lime Ferry Road. Looking south down Lime Ferry Road. Looking west into the site at the existing C store. This is looking west into the site at the existing car wash building. This is looking west um, along the property line where you can see the, the nursery next door. This is looking north at kind of the rear corner of the, the parcel. Looking north again at the existing car wash building. Looking southwest, this is uh, at the rear of the property. Looking south at the um, existing convenience store building. This is looking east at the back of the existing convenience store. The, the, uh, looking south towards the property line and the Easter Fence Company next door. Um, looking southwest at the existing trash enclosure on the site. Looking east um, at the rear of the site toward Lime Ferry Road. Um, this is Again, looking east towards Lima Ferry Road, the existing convenience store building is at my back. And looking west at the existing convenience store building. And at this time, the petitioner has a presentation. Thank you. Petitioner. Good afternoon, my name is Steve Rush and I'm with Site Development Engineering. And I believe I have some photos to show. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. How do I pull that up? That the one on the, the site plan up? Oh, I'll put the site plan up. Can you see the presentation, Steve? There you go. I got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, 
the site plan is on the is on the left. Uh, the building is in the center here. Um, as was pointed out uh, briefly, uh, to describe the surrounding areas, we have Haley Nursery to the north and Easter Friends to the south and west. And then across Lee Mayferry Road, uh, we have the St. Louis area map, uh, which is the uh, Wannenberg Street Guide. And we have sessions. And then uh, across the street and angle, we have Kel Kelly's Mark Tire and Auto Center. Um, basically pretty simple. The client bought the property to convert it to auto repair. Uh, the existing C store will be converted into three service bays. The two service bays on the on the right hand side or north side. Uh, would be for auto repair work. And the third bay would be for inside sales. The uh, car wash will be converted um, into two service bays that would provide the um, vehicle maintenance repairs and body repair work mentioned on the application. The Mel, if you could bring up the, uh, yeah. This shows the uh, the front of the building with the service, with the overhead doors, uh, replacing the uh, part of the right side of the building where there, uh, there are no doors right now. Um, and this is what it'll, it'll look like um, with the new service doors. Um, the site was left in pretty, pretty uh, bad repair, misrepair. There's a number of pavement sections that need to be, uh, you know, fixed. There's a lot, there's a rather large gravel area, I, I believe where the gas tanks were. So that'll have to be, uh, you know, resurfaced. So there'll be some required resurfacing done on the site. Uh, Department of Planning has requested that we reduce the entrances um, to 40 feet, uh, and we agreed to do that. Um, basically, that's the presentation. Park we haven't we have enough parking. Um, the server the hours of operation uh, would be Monday through Friday. Uh, approximately a seven to six, seven to seven, uh, certainly no later than that. So if there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, Steve, thank you. Uh, questions, anyone? I have a couple lanes still. Go ahead. You mentioned those uh, where the gas tanks, are they removed? Yes, he has all the, uh, all the, documentation that he needs um, for all that remediation that took place. Okay. How many uh, cars do you uh, plan on servicing or having on the property? I didn't quite hear that. How many cars or vehicles is he planning to have on the surface? How many is allowed and how many would you have? You, uh, do you mean the, for sale? Uh, Either are for sale or repair. Uh, well, there's only going to be one service bay for sale. So there'll be one car in there for inside sale. Um, and I don't know how to answer how many cars will be out there for repair. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so you have inside sale. That's the only sale that's going to be going on. No outside cars to be sold. Yes. Yeah, how about signage? Say that again, please. Signage, signs. Oh, you know, I sorry, I haven't thought of that. I, I I'm sure he'll want to sign. I don't know if it'll be on the building or if it would be a freestanding sign. I, that hasn't really been discussed. You're requiring additional lighting. 
No, the other building that he did before all the lighting was on the building. There was a number of abandoned light standards on the site and we have no plans at all to use those, to reuse them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> yeah, yeah we, this Keith. is Bill State. Go, go ahead, Keith. Uh, is this gonna be fenced in and secure? For the cars that are sitting there in, in the evening and over the weekends? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Let me see if I can get that answer for you. He says, uh, getting back to um, the sign, the me signs on the building and one freestanding sign, and there will be no fencing. Thank you. Thank you. This is this is Bill State. Uh, fo following up on Keith and uh, and the other Bill, um, how I think the question uh, that I have for uh, the number of cars is how many cars will be left on the lot overnight? Well, the I just got a text uh, that. There will be no more than 20 and 25 cars um, on the site. Now, now are these are these cars that are uh, waiting to be repaired? Are they cars for sale? Or are they no no there uh, will be no 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 outside sales. Um, okay. And then um, so they're cars ready to be repaired. Yes. And or be or being picked up, you know, after they're repaired. Sure. And you said you had a body shop in the old uh, uh, car wash. That that that'll be two um, two service bays. For for what purpose? For just service or uh, uh, for body work? Um, they'll be. All four of those bays will be offer the same service. I, I don't know that he'll have one bay specifically for one of the, you know, for either um, maintenance or repairs or body repair. I, I don't know that. I okay, know but, but the that. intent, but the intent is to use this facility to do body work. Is that correct? Uh, body work, uh, uh, body as, work and, and including paint and that. No, here's right. the body work would be um, paintless dent removal, window tinting, vehicle wraps, and that that type of thing. Okay, thank you. So basically, these cars are salvage cars, or. Say it again, please. Are they salvaged cars? No. Okay. Hey, Steve, is he operating someplace else right now? Say that again, Wayne. Is he operating at another location? Yes, yeah. he's out of town. And I'm getting um Emailed back and he just said no salvage. He's not operating in St. Louis right now. No, no, he's not. No, he's not in town. He's out oh. of town. No, okay. he, no, no. He's just not. He's just not here. But his he does operate in town. He lives in you know he lives there. So that's what you mean. Is he going to keep the other location open? Um, he the one that, two that I know Wayne is um. One's on Evergreen, and then the other one's on Lumay Ferry Road. Um, I don't. I think he wants to move where he is right now to this site on Lumay Ferry. Where's he on Lumay Ferry? Um, it is. I believe he's at the corner of Lumay Ferry and Lindbergh, uh, which is the oh. the site that Quick Trip has has acquired okay. for that okay. new store. Is that right, Steve? No, he he saw that he's no longer there. He working at he's uh, oh, okay. the temporary service um i think he owns a, a uh, another 
store north about probably towards uh, the Millville High School. He like bought, we did the ground across from Bader or Bade, uh, the roofing people. Um, yeah, he, he owned that, but he's not right. operating out of there, but he owned that way. Yeah. Yes. On, uh, ever doing that. Okay. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, you know, if there's not going to be any fencing, but there's going to be 20 to 25 vehicles parked. I assume that most of them, I mean, it's not going to turn into some kind of a junkyard, is it? No, no salvage. Well, but I mean, when, when you mention all the repairs, say someone's uh, needs a right front quarter panel repaired and it's crunched up. Does that car stay parked there till the part comes in? And then what uh, happens to the parts you take off the car? I would say that if he has to wait for a part, that the part the car would probably stay there. Okay, and what about the damaged parts that are removed? Is there going to be any type of enclosure to? I have to be honest. I I know Dave's place. And I don't know that I've ever recalled a wrecked car sitting in front of any of his establishment. So I don't think the salary thing, um, you know, is germane here. Oh, thank you. Okay, the only reason I ask that is because it says repairs such as which leads me to believe that's not a complete list. That's just a few examples that they do water pump replacement, brake jobs, and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, else? You know, I'm a, I don't know how to answer that because I don't know that it, it's not a day to day thing. That's for sure. Okay. Will they sell tires? Yes. And do they have a spot to store the old tires? Um, I would say I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how how we take care of that. Um, I would assume he would have somewhere in the back to store out of sight. There is a place behind the building, a grass area and behind the building. Um, There's no fencing around there, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I just got an email saying that there will be no um, wreck car for more than five to seven days at the site. So how would he limit the number of cars that have quarter panel damage to them? I would say that just the, the ability to service uh, cars is going to be the, the limiting factor. It would seem like I keep getting back to the fence. It would seem like that a fence would be appropriate if you're going to have a wrecked car there for five to seven days. You'd want something to keep heck kids or anybody from going in and plus the I ice, just... the eyesore that it would create. Yeah. Well, we can certainly discuss that. There's no. No item about that. That's all I had. Anyone else? All right, seeing none. Uh, Mel, you want to see if anyone would like to speak? Sure. So if you would like to speak or ask a question about this petition, please click the raise hand button next to your name on the uh, participant list. It might also be in the bottom right hand corner of the WebEx application. We don't have very many attendees and I don't see any hands up at this time. Okay. With that, uh, we don't need rebuttal. Steve, you got anything to add? Yeah, I just got a text to say that then if uh, the commission feels we need to fence that area, we will we will accommodate that. Okay. 
Anything else? Anybody? Seeing none, that concludes this hearing. Steve, thank you. Thank you so much. And with that, we'll go on to the last item, which is PC 16-22, Kimberly Jarge, a request for CUP and an R2. We'll just wait for the PowerPoint to come back up. Uh, yeah, so this is PC 16-22, Kim George, uh, which is a request for a CUP in the R2 for a 0 0.74 acre tract of land located on the north side of Parker Road, approximately 150 feet west of Bell Fountain Road. As you can see from the county context map, this parcel is in North County, and you can see in the, the aerial, the site is outlined in red. Um, I will note just south of the site, um, on the south side of Parker Road is Bell Park Plaza, which is r the geography of the Spanish Lake Town Center Master Plan. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see from the, the land use map, uh, the surrounding development, uh, the retail of Bell Park Plaza to the south. Um, there's uh, additionally some more retail along Bell Fountain Road, and then it's primarily single family uh, developments uh, along Parker um, and east um, behind the the retail fronting Bell Fountain. And this area is, is a little bit closer. You could see both parcels that um, constitute the, the subject site. Uh, so this view would be looking north from Parker Road. Uh, you can see the public hearing sign. And then this view would be turning around and looking south across Parker Road. Um, that is a tattoo shop. Um, just beyond that is Bell Park Plaza. And then this view would be looking east um, at the um, adjoining single family development. Um, and then you can see the intersection of Parker and Bell Fountain. And then this view would be looking west along Parker Road. And then this view is looking northeast. And then this view would be looking north um, between the, the two um, buildings. And then this view is looking north along the, the western property line. And then this view is looking northwest at uh, some of the adjoining uh, property. And then this view would be just turning around looking east uh, into the subject site. And this is looking south back towards the existing building. And this is northeast um, from the subject site. Uh, you can see the Dollar General development uh, located there off Bell Fountain Road. And then this would be looking east at the adjoining single family parcel. And then this view is from the roughly the same position, turning around looking south, you can see the existing parking um, on site. And then this view is, is another view of that parking area looking west from the eastern property line. And the petitioner has a presentation uh, at this time. Paul, real quick, would you, is this, is this already in use as a child care center? Yes. So, so the petitioner, if I can, Paul, she sure. has a home daycare license and that limits her to caring for 10 children. Okay. When you go over 10 children, it becomes a child right. care center. And that's why she needs a conditional use permit. Okay. All right. And then Kim, do you have a PowerPoint? Otherwise I can bring up the site plan. I do not. I've been trying to reach the. I um, saw you were asking Brian. Yeah. I, I will, um, I will bring up the site plan. Thank you. Oops. Okay. Can everyone see this? Yes. All right, Kim, go ahead. Okay. Good evening, uh, commissioning, uh, planning commission. Um, 
I am basically trying to convert um, my home of 10 children to go up to 20 children. Uh, we have both properties. We live in 1611 after we renovated it and we wanted to go ahead and offer services to more kids. Our daycare is from six weeks to five years old. We have the space. Uh, we're not really trying to go over um, more than 20 kids, but we have the capacity. Um, I really don't know what else to say. I've kind of been working on this since 2016 with the envision of being able to offer the community more, um, more daycare capacity for smaller kids, which is what the need is um, in my immediate area. There are two daycares that are on, e on either side of me and they're usually full. Uh, so the kids that I offer services to, um, they're usually, they're not in our area and they have to go a little bit further out. Um, you see in the site plans, we do have the parking um, really on both sides, even though I know we can only use one side for parking, but we're willing to accommodate whatever changes we need. Uh, St. Louis County, well, not St. Louis County, but state of Missouri child care rep did come out to my facility today. They've looked at my facility before. Uh, the fire department has as well, has looked at the architectural drawings that we have and the uh, rep for St. for State of Missouri Child Care um, is on board, always have been of me going up to 20 children. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, this, this Ms. Just, George, this, if this I may, can can you describe yes. a little bit about because there are two existing houses? Can you describe a little yes. bit about what how the two how the two homes will be um, used in conjunction, or just sort of do, sort of walk through that a little bit? Okay, so basically, sixteen fifteen is the daycare. Um, sixteen eleven is where we moved after we renovated the property. Originally, sixteen fifteen was going to be the daycare. Uh, but, but it just took too long and we purchased the property next door, which is 1615. That's the reason why there's already asphalt there. Uh, when we first bought the property, there was, it was a jungle in the back and the front for about six years. And so when we decided that this is what we were going to do with this property, um, it was easier for us to go ahead and have it excavated and have someone come in and, and lay some blacktop instead of having tree limbs coming up everywhere. Um, but 1611 is where we, where we reside and 1615 is strictly, is strictly daycare on the first floor. Uh, we don't use the basement for daycare and we don't use the second floor for daycare. Everything is on the first floor. So 1615 will have all of the 20 children and 1611 is your residence. Residence, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. I have a question. Um, I'm curious to know uh, which building is closest to the corner at Parker Road in Bell Fountain. 1615, 1611 is. Yeah. That's so, our residence. So the building closest to the Dollar General is where your daycare is. Well, both homes are closer to the Dollar General, but being closer to Bell Fountain would be 1611. That would be us. It's just we have all that land that goes back to that fence. Okay. Uh, if, the Dollar General's on the other side. Okay. So if, if, do you plan on uh, making your daycare bigger to hold 20 children? Well, we have the space now to hold up to 22 kids based on the fire, uh, the fire inspection. And that's having uh, four infants. That's including four infants. So we do have the capacity. It's, uh, it's about 2,300 square foot in that property. All on the 1st floor. Yes, we have a kitchen. Uh, there's going to be 
uh, three bathrooms is going to be installed there. And uh, based on our architectural drawing, it shows it holds 20 kids. Because you're looking at uh, 0.35 square feet for kids over 2 and 0.45 for infants for infants up to 12 months old. And that allows me to have 4 infants. Okay, how many um, employees do you plan to have there? 4. And you have about four parking spaces? Yes. Okay. On, you should have the uh, site plans there that shows we're using, we were able to use the, uh, we have a two car garage. So we were able to use uh, one of the car, uh, the carports for the garage. We have two spaces uh, on the other side of the fencing. And then we have another uh, spot if we decide to have a van and then I also, by me living next door, I park over there next door. So when when uh, parents bring their children, um, how do they, which way do they enter? They will enter in off of the street. We have, we have gravel and then we also, well, the blacktop is going to be throughout uh, all the parking area for the daycare. So they'll be, they can pull up on the side of the house. Which there's barriers there. Okay, so it wouldn't be any parking on the street because you already know no. Bell Fountain is a two lane street basically and very busy. Oh yeah, it's busy. I've been here since 2016. It's definitely busy, uh, but we haven't had any accidents uh, at the daycare since we've been here. We kind of instruct traffic with our parents. But most of the kids that I have here, or at least uh, there's at least two or three in their family that goes to my daycare. And it seems like they keep having kids. So when one goes off to kindergarten, I end up getting that new one. So it's kind of like a family thing. And that's the reason why I want to expand to be able to offer the same services that I did to their brother and sisters. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Lou. Anyone else? Yes, Wayne. I, uh, I have a question. Do you have any type of a nurse's office or medical place? Um, no, never, never had to get any of that as of now. Or, I mean, but if it's something that I need to have, I we do curious. all have CPR. I we all have curious. CPR training. Like if yes. a kid fell and hurt themselves or. Um, oh, yeah, we all have CPR training. Every everyone that works for me. We have to get it every 2 years. I mean, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. What are your hours of operation? I'm curious. We are actually open 24 hours um, and I, I did that because when COVID hit mo a lot of my, uh, a lot of my clients are police officers. Uh, for actually for Berkeley, um, and they come. And so with their hours changing so much, I was able to offer them that service uh, when a lot of daycares were closed. And I think I right now, we don't have anyone after six o'clock. So we're right now we're at a seven to six o'clock range. But, but you do plan on having 24 hour service there, don't you? You're saying? I plan on offering that service. Um, however, if I don't have the staffing, then I won't, I won't stress that service, but I do have parents that sometimes work a little bit later. And that's 1 of the reasons why I kept it at that 24 hours. So, in case someone, uh, didn't get off until 7 or 8 that I could still accommodate them and, and still be within compliance. Okay. And, and follow up to I so often wondered what people that work 2nd and 3rd shift single parents, what they do for child care. Oh, yeah, it's it's sad because there's not a lot of daycares that are open past 6 o'clock and even now with COVID. Uh, but like I said, I have a, a lot of police officers um, and still on the waiting list for new kids that are uh, police officer parents, both parents. So that's it's it's a need. I think I heard you say you was going to prepare meals or you prepare meals for the children. Oh, yes, sir. We give them meals if they're there from uh, 8 to 6, they get at least 3 meals. If they're there after 6, they also get dinner and a snack. Okay. 
in the 1615 property that uh, you moved out of, did you have to do any uh, preparations to make the building more accommodable? More the oh, county? yes, sir. When, when we first got licensed, we did everything St. Louis County asked us to do. We even got a uh, light uh, installed in. It's a pole light from Ameren UE. Uh, they specifically came in where it's it's lit all around the daycare. We have cameras around both houses all the way around with sensors. So if anyone comes on uh, the property, uh, we get a notification. I walk around with an earpiece in my ear just so I don't miss anything. Did you um, have to do any but, remodeling yeah. to the house itself inside? So that the kids we did do some updates. Uh, the previous people that owned it um, pretty much lived in it. Um, so we did have to come in and, and redo plumbing, redo the kitchen, um, redo the floors, uh, update the electric. Um, and so with this, with this time around, um, the only thing we're going to be doing is, is installing uh, more bathrooms because there's the space for it. Uh, we don't need all the closet space that we that we have on that first floor. So there's space for those additional bathrooms, so that it will accommodate all the kids. So the house will be easily trans uh, transitioned back to a livable house. Yes. Solely. Oh yes. How about uh, Mr. Cunningham mentioned dropping off? So how would the people when they drop it off? Do they make a circle, or how do they get out of your place? Usually they pull in, they pull around the back, uh, and they pull back up. Right now we have parking on the front of our house, um, and I don't know if the, if uh, St. Louis County is going to make us change that or not. If we do, I mean we do, um, and we'll just have to make additional space. But now they've been parking in the front, and it makes it a little bit easier for them to come in and pull back out. Uh, right now, since COVID, we haven't, the last two years, we haven't had parents come into the facility. So we actually have been coming out to get the kids and bringing the kids in and taking the kids back out to the parents. So they're able to pull in, pull out, or they pull around and they pull to the side of the house, especially when there's bad weather. Yeah. Have you had any experience with snow out there? And then they try oh, to yeah. get the kids off? We so have a they, snow, we have a snow company. Yes, sir. Oh, you had somebody move the snow from the property? Yes, it puts out, put out the ice. My husband has a crew as, as well as friends of ours that have a, a new snow company and landscaping business. They've been coming out and, and accommodating us for that. So when a lot of places were closed, we were able to be open because I, I know my parents, they can't just take off just because. Okay. I mean, the weather was bad, but that's still a just because. Okay, signage, you don't... Uh... Are you planning on having any signage advertising? Well, we, I have a small sign. Uh, it basically looks like a street sign. I don't think I'm going to do anything bigger than that because I don't really want to take away. We still have a house at 16, 15, 16, 11. So I don't really want to take away from that homey environment, which is why I you know, decided to keep it at 16, 15 and not get a commercial space. So it's just like a regular little stop sign, like sign, so that they'll know this is us. And we have decorations out, so you can't miss us. Yeah, I've seen it, but I just just wondered. Oh, okay, oh, thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, Mel, you want to see if anybody would like to speak? Yeah, we have only one attendee. Um, if you join the meeting using your phone for audio and you would like to speak, I've unmuted you. If you okay. called in. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I do have a question for Ms. Kimberly. Oh, could you state your name for the record, please? My name is Bonita Isabel. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. My, my question is, do you, what curriculum do you have for the children? What is your what curriculum? curriculum that we have? Yes, we basically our curriculum is based on what the state offers. We have a program that we use uh, and then most of it is is free form. My daughter teaches the preschool kids uh, and they have gone from uh, not knowing their alphabets. Uh, and this is 2 and a half to now 4 year old kids to speaking Spanish. Um, and this is all within the last 8 months. So we try to follow the guideline of the state 
but we kind of grab things from other uh, curriculum programs that better suit our kids. We have two kids that, that started with me back in 2016. And when they left my facility, uh, they are ready for kindergarten, even though they can only start preschool. Okay. And your employees, what skills and qualifications do they have? To well, my daughter, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's my okay. daughter just I like graduated. The skills and qualifications. Okay. Well, I am in school now for my master's in child development. I have a bachelor's in business. Uh, my daughter has a uh, degree from Lincoln, newly uh, received her degree in uh, English and journalism. And I have two other employees that basically have been in the child care industry for the last 10 years. Yeah, but what skills and qualifications do, the, do, do those other two employees have that have been there for 10 years? Well, that would be it. The fact that they've been experienced in the child care business for the last 10 years. One, one of my teachers that have been uh, in the business for the last 10 years, she works with the, uh, with the infants, uh, which is mm -hmm. basically from six weeks to uh, two years old. Uh, the other young lady works from with the two year olds to three year olds, and she's also been in the business for at least 10 years. Uh, we have to be certified. We take certified classes at least 12 credit hours every year. And we also continue um, training through the classes that the state offers. Okay. You know, the reason I've asked, I've mm -hmm. been in the child care field for years myself. I am a in-home child care provider in, mm -hmm. at this time. Yes. And I have, you know, went into many daycares and I've seen people who have hired, let's say, teenagers off the street, uh, yes. people with no skills. Uh, the children are getting uh, not the quality of care that they deserve. And I've seen some horrible uh, situations in daycare surrounding, so I'm just really yes, concerned with, with the daycares. I have oh, I grandchildren myself. Yes, I have grandchildren myself. And my daughter is looking for a daycare. Even though I am a child care provider, I yes. uh, I am not able to provide the daytime service that she needs because okay. I'm only I'm only one person. And yes. often I have been into these daycares where I am almost against daycares because of the yes. poor quality of service. So yes. I am looking for one that is offering. The, the curriculum, the qualifications, like you said, yes. the uh, CPR, the training. I'm looking yes. for a skilled, qualified daycare, and I haven't been able to find yes. them in the community. Well, our daycare does have it. I just recently uh, received my uh, CDA, which is a child care development uh, certificate, to be able to uh, teach kids and, and have them graduate from my daycare. I just recently received that in the midst of all these other degrees I'm getting uh, just about two months ago. Um, so we've had our in our in home inspection with the uh, with the counseling. Um, so we do take pride in our in educating our kids and making sure uh, that they come out better than they did when they came in. And that <laughs> I put you on. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I just want to go back to the other two employees that have yes. been in the business for years, but they, what kind of background training do those two have besides just being there? Well, so same they, thing, because I meet with my, we, we have a curriculum, they write it down, what they do. They don't just teach it, they actually plan it. We plan it. Um, so they're not just teaching whatever they think of that day. Uh, we do a calendar for the whole year that I give to the parents with all of our off days and any important information just because I'm not the daycare to close just because I don't feel like opening. You will know ahead of time, a year ahead of time, when we're open and when we're closed for holidays. Uh, so I, I take pride in my business because I've, I've owned several businesses and I've always taken care of 
uh, my clients first. So I'm we a need to move starter. on. Uh, yes. Okay, I don't see any other speakers. Okay. Um, I don't. Do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I just I just want to say we just want to be a service to the community and and I believe that we have been we've had we've taken in a lot of kids who were in environments just like this this young lady mentioned uh, and so we take pride in um, our kids when they come to our facility and when they leave out so that the parents do know that they're well taken care of and they're in a better uh, a better location and and it shows. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions before we let her go? Seeing none, uh, that concludes this hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. And that's the last item. Uh, we've already touched on good of the order. Anything, anybody have anything to add? I don't believe so. Jacob? Nope. Okay. With that, we uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I second. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. I seven. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thank you, everyone. Oh, appreciate it. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.